Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Eteria Chiaparizzi, professor of piano at NYU Steinhardt, and you will hear my students performing a very special program today. And you will hear me also a little bit. So, the special program is very dear to me, and it is very personal. I may speak today a little more than I usually do, because I normally do introduction to the program, but here there are so many strings attached to it that I want to share with you. So I want to share with you and tell you how cherished it is for me and how difficult at the same time. So the idea of it uh, came about because of the fact that my mother, who was my, not only my mother, but also my teacher for a very long time, despite uh, the fact that I was moving from one institution to another and studying with phenomenal uh, teacher Vera Gornostaila at the Moscow Conservatory, my, but my mother remained always uh, with me and always her discriminating ear was present and I lost that ear five years ago. So this year marks five years of her departure and at the same time in April she would have been 90. So I wanted to make a special tribute to her, but I really emotionally, I wouldn't be able to do a full solo recital. So I decided to involve and, you know, with the help of my students, create special program. This special program will consist of the pieces of composers whose formation as musicians were very strongly influenced by their mothers. And I will be telling you a little bit as we go along the program. Uh, I wanted to put some program notes. First I thought that I would do that. But at the same time I was so inspired by this poem that you will find in your program by Maya Angelou. And also I wanted to invite maybe an artist to recite it, but then I realized that I would rather put this poem in the program and you will read it to yourself silently with your own intonation. And you hear your mother's voice and your love for her. Having said that I lost this year five years ago, doesn't, it, it was physically, but her uh, instructions, her words, her presence has been with me and never left me and never will. And I believe that that's what happens with all of us. So this tribute will become a tribute to, I think, all mothers that I can think of and our students and, and yours and around the globe. And at this very, very difficult time, I also want to pay a tribute to mothers in Ukraine whose children are killed in invasion by aggression of, of a maniac and villain. Also mothers who are giving birth to their children right now in Ukraine, in the underground. For me, I was a product, you know, I was born in the middle of the last century. So, and I was still a product of the, what was called Soviet Union country that doesn't exist anymore, right? Although I was born in Georgia, which was one of the republics, and my education took place and I received it with gratitude and everlasting 
to an appreciation of the Moscow Tchaikovsky State Conservatory. And it was all my home, 15 different countries were brought together, uh, yes, by the system, yes, some by force, by the Soviet Union, but for me, as I was growing up, it was one home. It was absolutely incredible that you would fly, so as we would say here, coast to coast, for nine or ten, nine and a half, ten hours, and would still be the country, your home. It was absolutely, the sense of the scope and scale of the country was quite different. And we were equally at home in Georgia, in Russia, in Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, Siberia, anywhere, anywhere. So that's why for us, it's extremely difficult to see this happening. As for Ukraine, city of Kharkiv, which is being bombed this day, these days was my the first city that I were, ever went to as a concert artist, having won Tchaikovsky competition in 1974 the, in Ukraine, and the first city of Kharkiv was my first orchestral debut. By coincidence, it was also a city of my father's, who was a prominent singer. Also, when he started his career as a soloist of the Bolshoi Opera, Kharkiv Opera Theater was the stage where he made his debut. This stage does not exist anymore. So I just could not think of anything or could not do anything and cannot still go on with playing, teaching, performing without thinking of what is happening in that part of the world by evil will of one person. I hope that it will end, it will not be easy. But with our every sound that we produce, every sound that we hear or whatever we do, let's please keep in mind that as difficult as this world is, still there is beauty, still there is love, and still there is one and only mother. I would like to start this concert with a piece that was favorite of my mother. That was Chopin's Etude, Opus 25, number 7, in C-sharp minor. Again, it's very difficult for me because it is very tragic etude, and she used to tell me that Whenever I play this etude, I remember her. I, she wanted me to remember. She didn't know that I would remember her anyway, in minor or major, day and night, and every single second. But I want to start this and let you hear the sounds and maybe read the poem of Maya Angelou and remember that the word mother may be applicable to only one person in the world.
people share this moment with me. Uh, now I would like to give a little glimpse into just, and I will be commenting uh, probably every other performers or just group them somehow and just look into the program so I do not forget the order. So this, as I told you and you know, was written by Chopin and Chopin and his mother, Justina Chopin, had a very, very special relationship. Very tender, very delicate, uh, very fragile. She was of Polish nobility and of course as any representative of European nobility, she played the piano, she improvised, she raised him in love for music and of course discovery of his genius was like a, you know that the best reward to her and uh, not only we thought should thank her for giving us Friedrich Chopin giving the world Friedrich Chopin but also we need to thank her for the fact of preserving and publishing his pieces that, you know, at his deathbed, he, uh, his will was, he, he wanted to destroy them. He wanted to just burn them to ashes and not to have the world see or ever hear them. However, his mother and sister also, they went against his will and published some of those pieces, so we should be really, so some of the posthumous that you may see, notions, values, here and there, so all those come from, because of them, and thanks to them. So now we will be moving to <coughs> Mozart. So Anna Maria Mozart also, because we, we, we hear about Mozart's father, usually, right? Leopold. But uh, mother's role is not as well pronounced, just on, in superficial sources. However, she had great influence on him, and she used to accompany, <coughs> accompany him and his sister on their early tours when they were prodigies and you know performing at courts and you know becoming wonders of the universe and of the time then and forever and uh, then she even went with uh, Wolfgang to Europe uh, when he was, you know, job hunting in Europe and looking for you know positions because you know, not only people composers needed to also make some living. So, and uh, she was with him in Paris in 1778 when she died. And Mozart, of course, was deeply wounded and had his loss. He could not um, compose for some time. But afterwards, that same year, he gave birth to one of the most phenomenal sonatas that he ever wrote, one of the two minor sonatas for pianos, and that is his sonata in A minor. This was composed after his mother's departure. So we have Fares al Habubi perform Mozart for us. Thank you. 
Here we have a little change in the program. I didn't mean to appear more than once in this program. However, last night I found out that my student, Laura Georgiev, who was expected to play Tchaikovsky and Scriabin tonight. Beautiful, was sentimental by Tchaikovsky and Mazurka by Scriabin. She uh, got in this post, so unfortunately she is unable to participate today. However, I simply could not have this program without Tchaikovsky and Scriabin. Also because their very special relationship with their mother, mothers. Alexandra Tchaikovska, mother of Piotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Uh, he idolized her. So his love for her mother, so he was just worshipping her like an icon. And when she died of cholera, when Tchaikovsky was 14 years old, it devastated him and affected him deeply. And that actually caused his first musical composition that he wrote a waltz in his memory, in, in her memory. And instead of while sentimental, because I, I haven't played those pieces that Laura was going to play for you. But this morning I decided that, okay, what could I do? Something short, just a hint, just to mark presence of these composers in this program. And all of a sudden, uh, the idea of looking into his album for the young struck me this morning and I found the piece about which, to tell you the truth, I couldn't remember right away. But a piece which is Opus 39, num number four, in this mm. album for the young, with a very simple title, Mama. And I decided that that would be the most appropriate thing to play today, to include today. Uh, I would like to tell you a little more about you know, other composers, so I would not be like a television anchor appearing all the, all the time and saying something and disrupting the musical flow. So now, next uh, will be uh, Scriabin, yeah, right? Scriabin's Mazurka. So, uh, Lubov Scriabin was a very successful and gifted pianist. She also had her own compositions. And she played uh, for her son, uh, no, no, not for her son, but she used to play them, but she could not play for her son for a very, simple and tragic reason. Uh, after his birth, in about 10 days, she was di uh, diagnosed with some infection, lung infection, and lately sent to Italy for treatment, but couldn't make it. So shortly next year after Scriabin's birth, which Scriabin is 150 years this year, so one year after his birth, she passed away. So he never knew his mother and had no memories, but as imaginative and as absolutely a fantastic mind person as Scriabin, so for him, she was always his guardian angel who he never I mean, ne never remembered seeing. Uh, so upon her departure, Scriabin was raised by his grandmother and his aunt. <laughs> I also want to say that I take it as well very personal that like everything in this program today because on my maternal side, seven members, I am the seventh, pianist, musician in the family, pianist and piano teacher. So my grandmothers and my aunts, along with my mother, they were always hearing me and dropping here and there their comments on my playing. So I was nurtured 
24-7, you know. Uh, so I will play for you Tchaikovsky and Skriabin. And after that, Mina Kim will play for you Prokofiev's Tales of an Old Grandmother. As a matter of fact, today is, it happens so that it's my grandmother's birthday as well. And also today is death day of Sergei Prokofiev, who died on March 5th, 1953, the same day that Joseph Stalin died. And because of that, another villain, it was not possible to bury Prokofiev for two days. They kept it quiet so musicians wouldn't know what happened because the whole nation was going and paying respects to Stalin on that day. So, and speaking of Prokofiev, Prokofiev's mother, Maria Prokofieva, also was his great inspiration and she always made sure that he received the best piano mm, training and best you know musical upbringing that she could ever uh, given him and uh, taken him to fantastic teachers and Prokofiev speaking of again how this countries used to be one uh, or first they were separate then they were one and now look what kind of mess is going on. But Prokofiev was born in the village of Sonsovka, which was Ukraine, country of Ukraine. And during Prokofiev's lifetime, it became part of the Soviet Union. And then during my lifetime, country fell apart, so this Soviet Union and all those 15 republics got back to their uh, normal status, that is, different countries with their different cultures, different languages. But, again, so there are forces that would like to conquer and bring everything back together, which we may not allow to happen. So, uh, Prokofiev's mother, as I told you, was supervising his upbringing and even at some point, he, uh, he took, he was living with her, you know, because he needed additional inspiration when he was writing his opera, The Fiery Angel, on the novel by, oh, oh my God, gone. Bru, Valery Bruso. <laughs> yeah. So, and, uh, uh, Symbolist, uh, and that's very symbolic opera in Chek uh, Prokofiev's uh, biography as well. So I would like to invite Mina and share with us tales of an old grandmother. But no, I'm losing it because <laughs> I'm becoming emotional, too emotional. First, I will play for you Tchaikovsky and Skriabin. So the first piece of by Tchaikovsky, as I told you, it's Mama. Second piece is what well, Skriabin composed when he was 17 years old, and it's called Monigetti's Album Leaf. Thank you. 
which is departing from Russia towards Europe. Yeah. So, uh, Europe and then to the Wild West. So the next piece is by a couple of preludes by Olivier Messiaen. So, Olivier Messiaen's mother, Cécile Sauvage, was a poet. A poet, very highly artistic person, and whose circles of you know, friends and social circles were very, very sophisticated, and so were his, her tastes. And uh, she published a sequence of poems where she addressed her unborn son. And Messiaen used to say that that's, you know, sequence of poems were quite prophetic for his formation as an artist and as a musician. Uh, in these two preludes uh, that we have selected for tonight, the first one is specifically, it is not dedicated to his mother, but it is depiction in sound of his mother, Le Colomb, which is dove. And to him, her mother appeared in this angelic, and due to also his very deep Catholic upbringing. Uh, so it was in, in, in an image of a dove that he mm. uh, imagined her, and so this prelude was a symbol of hers. Now, uh, after that, uh, after Messiaen, we have two pieces, one of Benjamin Britten and another one of Aaron Copland. So Edith Britten and uh, Copland's mother, Sarah Copland, what they had both in common, they were, were both amateur pianists and singers. So they performed for their friends and they were taking care of their children's musical upbringing, but in a very, very different way. So if Britain's mother was quite imposing and as one of the well, Britain's biographers said, she was suffocatingly attentive to his upbringing. Uh, Copland's mother just freely enjoyed her son's success, development, and was always sharing this special gift of music that she passed along to him and was able to help him develop. So we have next three performers for Messiaen, Britten, and Copland, and then my last speech will be about the very last piece, which is also quite special. Also, of uh, well, what is notable, and I guess coincidence to this, because when we were planning, I didn't know about that, but this is a Women's History Month, so our concert happens to be held also during such an important period of time. So, and again, as I told you, my mother's 90th birthday is yet to come in April, April 8th, but the space was unavailable, so when I was told that March 5th was open, and again, immediately it just clicked that it would be my grandmother's birthday, I grabbed the date. So it's all very personal tonight, and yet I think that makes, that unites all of us with composers and you know, performers and listeners. So thank you for being with us. Our next performer is Chen Yang Li. Where are you, Chen Yang?
circle. So this piece is written in memory of my mother. So this is written by Georgian-American composer George Oakley, who is NYU alumni in composition, actually. But how he arrived to that stage, <coughs> and it's quite remarkable. George happens to be my, if we can, it sounds a little clumsy, but step-nephew. So he's a son of my step-brother, older step-brother. And when he was little, he was introduced to music and the piano as an instrument by my mother. When they used to come to our home, you know, we had two grand pianos, Steiner and Bepstein, and also an upright Zimmerman. And he loved to make his mark on all three of them. Uh, and uh, so he enjoyed listening to her explaining things on the piano and you know, learning songs with her. Just every time that he would come, when he was little, four or five years old, he would just drag her to the piano and ask her to teach him something new. So then, as he was growing up, he went to the music school, special music school for gifted children, which he completed and then uh, it was enrolled at the Tbilisi uh, Conservatory in Georgia, which he also, uh, where he earned his bachelor's degree. And then for his master's degree, he came to Chicago to study with me at DePaul University, because I was teaching there and at the beginning, very beginning of this century, I started there. So, uh, so George completed his master's degree in piano with me and then in the meantime he got married to also another student of mine, wonderful pianist Inga Kashakashvili. Also she was studying with me at that time uh, at DePaul and then you know they went on their own way. They had a little baby boy and they started raising him. They ended up then in New York and George came to uh, NYU to study composition because all of a sudden when he was actually studying with me in Chicago he started discovering that special calling that he all of a sudden that urge to compose music and of different for different instruments and different scale different form and then so he completed his received his academic ed education at NYU which along with very, very high level of academia gives a lot of freedom. So he absorbed all of that and uh, now about this piece, Sunset. George always carried the special love and gratitude to my mother and when she departed, he immediately started writing this piece, which is called Sunset. And this was in her memory, but dedicated to me because he wanted me to play. And of course I wanted to play too. But it happened so that I simply could not learn it emotionally. It was very, very difficult for me to sort of connect the fact of this piece being written in memory of my mother because for me, there is no memory of her. There is, so she is still in me and with me. Uh, so as he completed this piece, it took him about almost a year. Almost a year. In the meantime, his father, my stepbrother, was diagnosed with terminal disease and he departed. He departed actually simultaneously with George finishing this piece. So in the end, it just happened that this sunset was started in memory of my mother, was concluded also as an 
offering to his father. So I would like it was premiered by Inga Kashakashvili when I in special concert in which George wanted me to perform it. I simply could not learn it. And I decided that eventually when I'm ready I might do it. But today it is performed for you by a graduate student of mine uh, who actually earned his dual degree already a couple of years ago and now is a member of the music faculty and that is Marcus Kaitila. He has learned this piece especially for this program and I am very grateful for him as I am grateful to all the participants of this concert. Marcus, please.
again thank you all participants, my very dear young colleagues, and I cannot even call students any, anymore. So, although we remain students all our lives for ever, anybody who has ever taught us. But thank you for being with us tonight and sharing this, again, as I said, dear program to me. And as we part tonight, I would like to wish everybody much success, happiness, joy, and health in much peaceful and safe world and that we are going to build together. And that will be based on beauty and on music. Thank you very much.